I want to extend my thank you to every one of you from around the world that prayed for me every one of you that sent your gift even though we didn't celebrate the, my my birthday but you were so mindful and so thoughtful to pray leave me a message to text me you wished me very beautiful things many of you sent me gifts of different kinds of things thank you so much my name is his excellency the most reverend Kai mary i am one of the archbishops one of the most reverends of the church when we do a service like this i do it in the name of the church Let us pray. I want to thank those of you who are fathers, husbands, who have taken the responsibility of what it means to be a man, the male in today's world. I wish you a very wonderful happy father's day as we light this candle that appears during during advent um, during christmas and during easter we light it during the major feasts the one light of Easter that carries us to another Easter. We pray today, O oh Father, Thou Ancient of Days. We thank You for being a Father to us, not just a God. For people enter into relationship with their gods, and goddesses and I have actually have absolutely nothing to do with them but that is not how it is between the family of the Trinity and us we ask that life and light from you revelation for success and for prosperity for happiness and for health come upon us we ask that every part of our body be filled with your life and with your happiness we ask this in the name of jesus christ our god who lives and reigns with you, O Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And so, Amen. Father, in Amen. the name of Jesus, we ask that your power come upon every man so that they will do their job. They will recognize their weaknesses and their strength. 
you call both male and female to lead and to rule and to reign. Eternal Father, call the men again to be men. People of truth, people of life, and people of power. Amen. 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 Vivian, you are leading the service. Was the yes. part was the first part of the service? Yes. We will now have the service of affirmation and declaration. Wherever you are in the world and you are joining us, I want you to begin to tell the universe, the planets, tell the stars, tell every forces. Tell every power, whatever type they are, talk to the human minds. It's all connected. We are all wired together. Talk to the human spirits. Talk to any problem in your life. Confess who you are. People know of confession as coming to confess sins. It means affirm. Declare who you are. You cannot come to the presence of a God and our God, capital G-O-D, and you are coming there miserable. You are coming there sick and sad. Nobody knows who you are. They'll throw you out. So you better, you better begin to tell, tell the kingdom who you are and why you are here. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to declare. Begin to affirm who you are. Begin to declare what you want. Who are you? What do you want? Why are you in the presence of God? God said, I am who I am. So who are you? Why not tell us who you are? Why not affirm who you are in Christ Jesus? Who you are with the Holy Ghost? Who you are with God the Father? Who you are with humans? Why not tell us? We want to hear it. How did you become a Christian? Was it by Jesus? Then tell the Father. Affirm and declare who you are. Affirm and declare what you want. Second part of the service. Right now, I want you, please, everybody, be quiet. I want you to manifest who you are. Those in the practice of witchcraft manifest demons and servanthood to fallen spirits or to the spirits of the dead. You have to manifest something. 
If you are not willing to manifest something, you have no right. You have, you have no reason to even come to church. You have no right to step into this place. You were created to manifest. To mm -hmm. manifest what you came with. You were not mm -hmm. created to be a chicken. To run from every eagle and every kite. Everything that crawls and swims. That flies, you run. You are not a wild beast. In the migration of Kenya and Tanzania. Or in South Africa. All the wild beasts migrating from one grazing ground to another. Running, born to run. Run from every enemy. Run from people. Run from demons. You have to manifest who you are right now. You must stand your ground. You must manifest what you came with to this earth. You must manifest who you are in Christ Jesus. And in manifesting, you are to call things to come into existence. What do you want? That's what they ask you. If you want to manifest, they ask you, what do you want? You don't stand there and say, I need money. They'll tell you, get out of here. We don't know what you're talking about. Hannah went into the tabernacle and said, I want a son. Specific. Bathsheba walked into the presence of the prophet and said, lead me to my husband. My king. And she went and knelt before and prostrated herself on the ground. And David said, stand up my wife. I know I'm your king. What do you want? She said, you made me a promise that my son will be the next king. He said, yep. Call the authorities for me. Take Bathsheba's son, Solomon. Make him ride on my chariots. Clothe him with my kingly apparel. Naomi set the stage for Ruth. They knew specifically what they want. What do you want? And are you willing to manifest it? Because you have a part to play. You can't go to tell God, I want a child, I want a child. When you are not meeting a man to have that child. Always, you must always have a part to play. For in anything you want on the earth. You must. Others have a part to play. God has his own part to play. Somebody challenge you that by tomorrow morning you'll die. And you'll be shaking. And crying. Instead of telling the person, let me tell you the truth. You say I'll die tomorrow morning. You will die within the next one hour. And the word I've spoken is a creative word. I've spoken death into your life. You die within the next one hour. And it come to, and it happened quickly. When we say manifest, service of manifestation, service of manifestation means use your Christianity to create something, to speak things into existence. Let there be light. I am changing darkness. Darkness, listen. You see, Jesus did not just talk into the A and said, let there be light like we read in our Bible, which is stupid, which the real thing is. He turned and he looked at the problem and he talked to the problem. You go to pray, you don't understand this side of Christianity, which is what I practice. I talk to things. I talk to events. I talk to situations. I talk to happiness. I talk to money. Everything has the ability to listen. And the ability to carry out instruction. Doesn't matter whether they are mountains or river or stars. Or aliens or whoever they are. Or mammoths or dragons or angels. Or both good and evil. Sickness can listen. Sickness has a voice. Sickness has a life. Every problem has a life in it. You have a little bit of money. When are you going to start talking to that money and say, I want, I'm going to change you from a little money to something big. I 
going to ring the bell and I want you to start to manifest, to begin to create things, to call things into existence. And before I do that, this is what I'm going to ask you. While you are manifesting, move around, go into your phone, go and find your family pictures. Either on your phone or somewhere in the house. Find a picture of your father, the person who brought you into this world. If you don't know who is your father, whoever you've chosen on earth to be a father to you, we are not talking of God Almighty. Leave God out of this. Leave God out of this. For those of you who keep deceiving yourself that God is your father, yes, he is. But you must choose a man on the earth to be a father to you. If you don't have, if your father is not a good person, he doesn't carry power, doesn't carry money, doesn't have anything, then you must have somebody on earth whether an uncle or myself, or there must be a man that you must choose to be a father to you. Find his picture and bring it out. Find his picture and bring it out. Because when we finish manifesting, when we enter into the world, you're going to use that picture to do something for me. I was supposed to do a service yesterday with Vivian and Mary and Victoria. Yesterday was such a busy day for me. So begin to look for it. You can wait maybe after the service of manifestation. Then you get it. You get it. You keep it in front of you. If you cannot get it right now, make sure after the service you get it and do exactly what we are going to ask you to do. So I'm going to ring the bell and you're going to start manifesting. You're going to start manifesting. Make sure that if your father wasn't a good person, you didn't like him. He was poor, sickly, had no good advice for you, divided the family. Don't bring his pictures out. Any, any man in your life that you call your father must be somebody that you have high respect for. Anybody cannot just be your father. If they don't carry greatness, they are not entitled to be your father. If they don't carry money, they are not entitled for it. So this is, this is completely a different scenario today. I'm going to ring the bell three times and you're going to start creating and manifesting. Begin to call things into existence. Let's go. Begin to manifest who you are. Let's go. Many of you, this is so strange to you because this is not how church normally looks like. You come to sit to listen to sermons. <laughs> Mary, is that not true? They come to listen to sermons. They don't come to do the real thing. This is the real church. <laughs> Create things, create, call things to come into existence. Whatever you need, call it to come. Whatever you don't want, call them to leave. Whatever you don't want, remove them out of existence. Whatever you want, call them to appear. Create things. Speak to issues.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Next. Vivian, what's the next? The Word and the Holy Communion. All right. Read to us the reading for today. Let the reader read to us from the Gospel. Matthew 7, reading from verse 9 through 11. Or what man is there of you, who, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or, if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven Give good things to them that ask him. The end of the reading. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, and thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let me make this very clear. God doesn't exist. Don't accept any teaching or doctrine from any church or religion that tell you that God is one. We say God is one. The name God. Please everybody be quiet. Please everybody be quiet and listen. Make sure you find a picture of someone you call your earthly father. Make sure you have their picture in front of you. Or when we need it, you just pull it out from wherever you have it. The picture of whoever you've chosen to be your earthly father. Because let me make something very clear to all of you. There is no joke here. If your physical father, you've removed him from your life. Because such a person didn't care for you. You must legally, you must legally change your name to the person that you've chosen to be your father, your earthly father. Legally, you must do it. Because you cannot, you cannot rob Paul to go and pay Peter. Mm -hmm. Also, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, I am. Good. Even if you never carry your father's name? If you didn't carry your father's name, that's different. Because there are so many, so many complications in a lot of people's lives. Say that again. There you go. So if, if you didn't even carry your father's name, that's, that's okay. Because there are some of you who are born you carried your family name. You didn't carry your father's name. I don't know why. If my father didn't treat me right, I would have changed the name already. Long time ago. I will never be his name. My father treated me very nicely. Yeah, father, sometimes it's just a sperm donor. He said what? Sperm donor. We don't use such word. There's nothing like that. We don't use that. My father wasn't that. And there is no earthly father. There is no earthly father that is a sperm donor. Human beings are complicated beings. You have to know this. Life sometimes is complicated. Sometimes children are born. And they are just born. Sometimes we don't know who the father is. And so a child bears the name of a child bears the name of the mother's family. Many a times it happens like that. There is no spent donor. There is no bastard child. Everything depends on 
whether they were whether that man is a, is a man of good intention or have the right motive in that relationship it doesn't mean that because you have a child with somebody that you should marry the person there's a lot of cultures that mixes these things up so sometimes wedlock is not an answer to problems that are sorry. I do not see any child being born as a problem. Some people think that pregnancy is a problem. Pregnancy is no problem. If a woman is pregnant, we have we have to help where where she is not capable of helping herself. Family should rise up to help her instead of condemning her and judging her and thinking she's at the wrong girl that came to the family. Now let me go to where what I want to say today. Lady, it is good that you brought that spam donor thing into this because we have to correct that. We have to correct that. The point of view, Mr. Yeah, it does not mean that because a father is a bad person. Now, what I mean by a bad person means irresponsible. That does not make him a sperm donor. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't donate no sperm. There was love at the time that the baby was conceived. Something was going on. You guys were trying to work something out, work a relationship out, develop a relationship, develop, and then a baby came in. And sometimes it's scary to some men. Scary to some men who, according to the Caribbean, we call them mama's ass. You know? They are, yeah. They are men. They are men like that. We call them mama's ass or daddy's butt. There are some men who are tied down to their father. There are some men who are tied down to their mothers. And so... In the process of having affair and relationship with women, kids do come. And those kind of men are not responsible men. They are not responsible. They don't know what it means to be responsible. You see young men who don't know what it is, what it means to handle relationship because there is one word to describe your existence on the earth and that word is responsibility that's what it's all about that's the one word that describes why you are here you are going to be responsible for yourself responsible for other people if you don't want to do it others will throw responsibility at responsibilities at you, life will throw responsibilities at you, whether you like it or not. And that is why either, either you bear your own responsibility or you become a slave to other people. Either you are able to take care of your money or make your own, create your own wealth, or you are going to make money for others and create wealth for other people. Life sometimes is complicated a little bit. And our job is to, is to go through life with all the complications that, is, that either we create or is created knowingly or knowingly. Where I have problem with many men is that you've made one woman pregnant. You don't want to be responsible for her, nor for the child. Why do you go about making other women pregnant? And if a woman knows that a man is irresponsible because there is no man who is going to come into your life and tell you that the reason why he's no longer with Martha and Magdalene he's not coming to tell you that it was his fault that he's not a responsible man he's coming to paint the picture of how he was treated wrongly every every man come to paint that picture every woman come to paint that picture and you are not to be carried about by every wind of picture story that somebody coming to tell you. 
Okay, even if that woman treated you like that, are you are you are you supporting the woman financially? Do you have a job, a forty hours job, or a personal business that you are giving that woman up to thousand dollars a month? I'm not talking of men who are asked to pay two hundred dollars a month, and they go and change change their numbers. You don't know where they are. Run away from their jobs. Don't want to have a job anymore. Apply for social so that they don't pay two hundred dollars a month to their kids. Those are what we call evil men. They are evil. These are evil men. And when a man tells you that they, he or she has a child already, you have to know what is the relationship, except in a situation that there are some women who are also very cruel and stubborn. They have a little problem with the man. They take the pregnancy and run away. You never know whether your child survives or not because you don't see the woman anymore. Or they take your kids and run to another country or somewhere else. You never see them again. That's different. But real women don't do that. Real women don't do that. Real women allow their kids to... You don't go to go and tell children adult business. Why you and their father or their mother are not together. What happened? You don't need to go into all those things. With children and children, leave them out of this. Because life is going to come to them. The greatest teacher on earth is life. And that is why when you start telling your children all the things that they shouldn't know, they begin to hate their mother, begin to hate their father. And then if they are evil children, they begin to use the story you've told them to play on each of you. Anytime that the mother doesn't agree with that child, that child turn and reconcile with the father and join the father to attack the mother. And any time that, that, child, uh, that the father and the child do not agree, that child will turn against the father and go back and reconcile with the mother. Children knows this game. They know it. That's why you don't involve them in adult business. When I say adult business, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about life issues. There are things that they should not be told until they grow up and they can handle it. Then you can tell them. That's why many of us, our parents did not tell us a lot about themselves because we can't handle it. And you blamed them. Suddenly they died. And you say, oh, they should have told me. You could not have handled it at that point. If you discover that a man doesn't want to have a job, that man doesn't have no mental disability that has incapacitated him completely. He still smoke marijuana. He still smoke crack. He has the money to buy those things and buy beer and buy other forms of high alcohol and drink. He's still keeping girlfriends and mistresses. And yet, he cannot stay on a job. That person cannot be your father. And if you are a smart woman, that man should lose his father's right to those children. He should lose his legal right to the children. If a man is not paying child support, when you, the woman, have allowed him to continue to see the children, the law of God demands that you treat such a man like a bastard. That does a man that we call a bastard father. In fact, he's not even a bastard father because he does not even qualify to be a dad. He does not qualify to be a father. And if you keep keeping your children around such men, your children will turn out to be like him. Because what the baby elephant sees, the mother does. That's what the baby elephant's going to turn out to do. I don't believe in monkey see, monkey do. I don't believe in that. Nobody's a monkey here. 
Because people use that monkey. See, monkey do know. I don't believe in no monkey. Anything that people have used in a very bad way, I don't use it. Elephant learn very fast. They remember too. They remember too. Money, 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 money. Money will tell you everything. Except in a situation that a woman said, I don't need your money. I don't want to have anything to do. That's different. And my own policy is, don't use children to go and fight adult, adult warfare. Don't use children to go to court. To go and start fighting over children. I think that stupid fathers do those kind of things. They want to go and fight. Who should be, who should have, who should have custody or who should not have custody. I, I am a firm believer that a mother should have 100 custody, 100 percent custody of children. That's mine. Why? Because that's the mother. That the the real owner of children is moms. The real owner of children are mothers. Men cannot raise kids. Let's face it. I don't care how you try to make it scholarly or academically or psychologically or biologically. You want to go and argue over those things. And all of that, I don't buy that. Mothers are the true owners of all of us. Without them, we won't be here. No man can give birth to children. There is no man that can give pregnant. I've never seen it. <laughs> Women are given a special gift of nurture. We call it nurture. The gift of nurture to be able to bring us, to form us, to make us into humans. After that, our dad can now begin to form us to be a man. If he is a good dad, he now forms us to be a man. Mothers make us. Dads form us to be a man. Just like, just like there is no man that can seriously raise a daughter. Because the ways of a woman can only be imparted can only be anointed by a lady. It takes a lady to raise a girl and turn her into a woman and form that woman into a lady. It takes, it takes a female to do that. It doesn't take, a man cannot do that. Because there are things ingrained in a woman that a woman passed to another woman. There are things ingrained in a man that a man passed to another man. There are things that no woman can give to me. There are certain gifts that pertain to me as a male, that only a male can tell me this is the way we do it as male. A woman can never do that. I'm not talking about if there is no man in your life, you go, go and pick any man because you just must have a man to go out with, to go out on a date, to come and fix something for you in the house. That's not what I'm talking about. Because sometimes you do those things in my work out fine. Sometimes you, go, you don't know what trouble you've gone to go and bring into the family. And one thing that I'm very, I'm very, I'm very observant about is this. Majority of people who disappear, people who get killed are women. If you watch the television, majority of people who get killed in all these homicide, homicide uh, documentaries and so on, they are mostly women. In every 10 documentaries of how they finally found a murderer and so on, in every 10, at least 8 of it are women who got murdered by men. That is why Women should be very careful. That's why when I see prostitutes out there on the street and women who've decided to become drug dealers, I fear for them. Because they can be killed at any time by men. There is something in men that we men need to recognize and begin and begin to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, men have a taste for blood. Men have a taste for violence. 
It took a man how many months since November after the election? It took a man how many months? November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Eight months for him to finally come out to say that I lost the election. Did all of you see it? Yeah. Did all of you see it? I want you, I hope you are following what is happening in the world. It took a man, one man, it took him eight months for him to come out finally and say the truth. Mm -hmm. And people have died for the lie. People have been murdered for it. People have become violent for it. Now, how do you think that those of us who are also in that same party, how do you think we are going to look at him now? What 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 then are you guys gonna say? Finally, he's come to say he lost the election. Finally, he must find somebody to attack. It is his daughter and his son-in-law that are the reason why he didn't win the election. Have you guys heard it? Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah yesterday, I had I had a big conference call of of Republicans, and and we are talking about which way to go with the parties. Is the party going to split into how many groups? Because this is it's a shame. It's now a shame. We don't know how to handle it as a party. We've been blackbusted by one man whom we recruit to represent us as a party and as a nation. Eight months is what it has taken him. Something that he would have said within one hour after after the other person was declared to be the winner of the election he will have come out and do what normal human beings do i've saved i'm happy that i got the opportunity to save all of you i'm very happy for such an opportunity america has spoken and i must obey i want to thank you all i will do everything in my power to support the new government and you and and then you leave that's how you know a real father a real father that's how they speak they don't know it all they don't believe they have it all they don't believe that without them the world will come to an end any leader any father who decide that he will die at his post. He will die at his post. If he doesn't be the leader, nobody will be. He will destroy everything. That is satanic. That is from Lucifer. That's how Lucifer, Lucifer thinks. That's how fallen angels and demons, that's how they think. There is no human being that is the alpha and the omega of the human race. In the next 10 years, Nobody will remember a lot of leaders. The next 10 years, things are going to go very quickly. In my generation already, you ask a lot of the young people who are now coming up, they are, they are now gone from being teenagers to young adults. Ask them who Michael Jackson is, they don't know. Ask them who the Bee Gees are, they don't know. Bonnie M, Abba. Ask them who B.B. King is, they don't know. Ask them who Frank Sinatra is. They have no idea. They have no clues. Who are the Eagles? They have no clue. Who is Phil Collins? They have no clue. Those people are still... Ask them who is Madonna? Who is Madonna? They have no clue. Who is Angelic Kidjo? They have no clue. Who was Steve Owens? The Crocodile? They have no clue. You ask people today, who was Anthony Bourdain? He just died about a year or two ago. They have no more clue. So why do you think that without you, the eighth will be ruined? Mm -hmm. Or without your kind? Because generation comes, generation goes. After 10 years, everything is over. It's a new, it's a rearrangement. After 20 years, well, if people still remember you, <laughs> okay. Ask the teenagers who are now young adults. Many of them ask them, who is Jay-Z? Who is Beyonce? 
who is Rihanna, they'll be looking at you like, who are these people? They have no clue. You ask them, who, who, who was George Bush, senior and junior? Who was Reagan? Except they had something in history or several lessons in school, at school. They have no clue. Ask them, who is, ask them who is Nelson Mandela. They have no clue. Mary, are you still on the line? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ask them who is Nelson Mandela. Ask them who is Desmond Tutu, the Archbishop of Cape Town. Ask them who is the Dalai Lama. Ask them, the Dalai Lama, the beautiful heart from Tibet. They have no clue. They have no clue. Ask them about William Shakespeare. They have no clue. <laughs> and you can go ahead and ask them who and who started at uh, Apple Company, among others. Who were they? They have no clue. It's, uh, I keep telling all of you that life is about your contribution. It's not even about your competition. Nobody cares about your competition. You can do all that competition while you are alive. Everybody runs. Everybody struggles. Bah, 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 bah. We wear our white shirt, wear our red ties or blue ties, wear our, our coats and run around the eight and boom, 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 everywhere. One thing, blah, bam. It all comes to an end. Or you retire. And nobody even remember you. Nobody even care. One of the musicians from England was asked the other day, what do you want to be remembered for when you are dead? He said, I'm not thinking about death, about dying. And why do you think that I should care what people think of me when I die? Do you think I care? I don't care. They say, why? Because nobody will care. And that's true. Look at the long line of all the preachers that has come. From A. A. Allen. Just go and start looking at them. Go, go, go and start looking at the names of all the great preachers. Miracle workers. Tongue, tongue busters. Demon chasers. All of them. Wonderful uh, sermon givers. The different, different ones that have come and gone. Go and look at them. You ask Christian people who these people are. Who is Benson the Dowser? They have no idea. Paul Yongicho is still alive. Ask who is he. I think he changed his name to David. Ask who is he. Nobody have a clue. Who were the Maranatha band? Nobody, know, nobody knows anymore. People who were just here a few years ago, they've all disappeared. They are gone. Nobody want to listen to their trash anymore. Their music now is trash. <laughs> Yesterday I was coming back from the gym because I have a 30 days that I've said for myself to go to gym and swim and do push-ups, be in the sauna, be in the steamer, be in the hot tub, you know, run, all kind of stuff, at least for three hours each day for the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. So yesterday was number three, today will be number four. After this service, I'm back. For three hours, then I come back to the office and go to and um, come to the altar to continue my observations, my retreat. Then go to the office and work. So my life has been like that. I was coming back and I was at South Emporia Avenue. A man stopped me and said, "Ah, uh, are you not coming to come and get some things from here?" I said, "From where?" He said, "Look at look at something in front of you," and I look. Uh, there is a there was a house in front of me as I was as I was walking towards it, and I saw a bunch of people from 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 houses around, and they are going through a pile of a pile of stuff. I mean, you 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 talk about like about fifty trash bags, shoes, mm -hmm. clothing, televisions have been thrown out on the street. It's, it's like it's like. Either the person was a drug dealer or something and got arrested and and nobody can take care of the house anymore. Maybe the maybe the house was being rented and maybe the owners came and packed all their things into trash bags, up to fifty or more. 
and maybe it has stayed and nobody come to pick it. They've tried to call, call the relations or friends, nobody. They just pile it up by the side of the of the cup, the side of the road. <laughs> Mary, I said that I will tell you that story because it will make you laugh. Because you see, at the end of the day, many things will end up by the side of the road to be carried away by trash, by the trash people. And end up in the mind's field of trash. And people were going through it, children and men. People were stopping their car and going through whatever they can they, they find important. They are going through all those things. I mean it pile up high. And this is this is all that the person who walked for is right there by the side of the street. Oh yeah. At the end of the day. So you better come to terms with it. But let's go back to what we are talking about. Any father, anybody who decides to be a father to you and a father to your children and you are very good to the person, you are not trying to scam the person. And the person is not responsible to you. We start from financial responsibility. I'm not talking of somebody who paid for a mortgage or paid for a rent. And you go to ask them for money to go to. They tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. They start giving you excuses and telling you. Let me tell you something. Fathers are known by their brutal force to go into life with that force. Instead of using their brutal force on you and the children. They use it on, on, on life to combat life and make money, legal money, not drug money, not pimp money, not go to go and rob anybody. How you know a real father? A real father is not an armed robber. A real father is not a drug dealer. A real father is not a pimp. He goes to work and bring money and say, this pays for the mortgage, this pays for the rent, this is for food, this is for utilities, and never complain. Never! And he put it in your hand. And say, you can manage, you are the owner of the family, you are the leader. The leaders of families are women. The protectors of families are men. Men must be providers. If you are going to be a father, you must step up to be a, a provider. If you desire to make a, if you desire to play, I said it over and over in my quotes. You use money and happiness. Money and happiness and wealth to play love. Don't allow any man into your life who come to do love and romance. And he's zero. He has no bank account. You ask a lot of men, they don't have bank account. They have no bank account. They are running away from government. If you see any man who is running away from responsibility to his children or to his woman, if you see those people, walk away from them. Don't play along. It is a sin before the Almighty God and before the Holy Ghost for you to see a man who is not responsible and you allow him to roll with your children and with you. A man who is not responsible cannot be a father to you nor to your children. Amen. Because if your children keep following such a man, your children possibly will turn out to be like their father. Because what the elephant sees, the baby elephant sees, that's what they are going to copy. And they'll begin to settle. Well, I'll be able to have a mistress or a girlfriend. At least I'll choose one. I'll target one who has a job, a full-time job. And what do you do when she goes to work? Nothing. You sit, you, you sit home to smoke marijuana and to drink. And all you got to give to the woman is sex until she's tired of you, until she comes to her senses and she kicks you out like a Tasmanian devil. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know what the Vietnamese people call such a father or such a man? Do you know what they call such a man who is hopping from one woman mm. to another woman, giving them babies or, or just being there, doing nothing, not responsible? In Vietnamese, we call them Kong, Kong He, He, Kong He. <laughs> you know what Kong He means? Kong He means I he good. I he good. Mba, mba. Yep. Kong He. I he good. That's what the person is. Yep. Yeah. Kong He. And if they really want to mock the person, they will tell you, oh, the man you are with is Kong Hell. Do you know what Kong Hell means? <laughs> do you know what Kong Hell means? I'm talking of hell like H-E-L-L. -L. Yeah, do you know what it means in your own language? Do you know what hell means? <laughs> Kong He. Kong He means a goat. Kong Hell means a pig. A pig. <laughs> Kong hell means a pig. <laughs> so they will tell you that they would rather choose a man. They will tell you that they would rather choose a man who is Kong boy. Kong boy or Kong boy. Kong boy means a cow. So Lizzie, kudo to you. Long life and prosperity to you. They will... <laughs> They would rather choose a man who is Kong Boy, a cow, or Kong Voy, an elephant, than a Kong He, a goat, or a Kong Hell, a pig. <laughs> Think about that. Wow. So they ask you, is your husband a Kong Boy? That is cow? Or is he a Kong Hell? Giving you all the hell like a pig. I said, I like that. How do you receive something fast from God? I want to make it very clear to you. The name God is a title that is shared by three beings. Yes, we say God is one because the title is shared by three. The Christian doctrine speak of God as one. Hear ye, O Israel, O prince and princess, hear ye, our God is one. What do they mean by that? Three beings shared that title. God the Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Ghost is God. Period. It stops there. There's no other being that is God except three of them. We are small gods. I know some people start mocking. We are no gods. I'm telling you the truth. We are small gods because we are made in the image and likeness of God. We can only be who he is. Amen. God will not make something that is less than himself. Something that is miserable. You are a God too, but a smaller one. That's why you can exercise his power. You can exercise his senses on the earth. The Father is called Lord, capital L-O-R-D. Jesus is called Lord, capital L-O-R-D. The Holy Ghost is called Lord, capital L-O-R-D. I'm making it known to you. They all share the same title, God. They share the same title, Lord. They are all called Adonai. They are all called El Shaddai. Three of them are called Jehovah this, Jehovah that. It pertains to three of them. The person who is the center 
of the whole thing. The person who brings all ideas is the father. That should tell you something. The father is responsible for bringing ideas as to how things are to be done. Jesus is the secretary, the president of all things good. I'm not talking of evil things here. I'm talking about the kingdom of God here. The Holy Spirit is the one who will turn, turn the things of the Father and of Jesus. He will turn it into things, physical things. He will turn things into things. He will make it to appear physically. A bit of the Holy Spirit is in all of us. Because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be alive. Just know that He is the life giver. Mm -hmm. Jesus makes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus makes the Holy Spirit put in. You put the corn, Jesus put the corn in the ground. The Holy Spirit breathed life into it. And what happened inside the soil is none of our business. It will come. Because the stamp of the Father is on it. The stamp of Jesus is on it. The life of the Holy Ghost is on it. It will come. Amen. The little tiny seeds are put on the ground in the backyard. In my garden there. I watered it. Put fertilizer in it. Miracle Groot. And walk away. Went back yesterday to take a look. My tomatoes are crawling all down the steps to the ground. I planted six different kinds of watermelon. And they are already climbing out. They are already stretching, going, going far away. They are already going far. The zucchinis, the deeds, the dad, they are all stretching out. They are all fighting for space now. The onions are growing tall. The carrots are out. I stand far away and I can smell tomatoes. I can smell mint. I can smell basil. I said basil. I can smell rosemary, parsley. Far away I, can be, I begin to smell them. Fathers must lead, must rule with you and lead with you. If they cannot do that, they have no right to be in your life. I'm saying this because we live in a, in a, in a, in a generation when a lot of men do not want to take up their responsibilities as males. We are not even talking about as fathers, as males. So many men want to become women want to change their sex to women. Why do you need to? Like I told you guys the story of the man that was owing so many women child support. He has gone about like a kong hair, making babies from everybody. Like a wild goat. He has, yeah, kong hair, he has made babies from everybody. And now, the, the women now can't take it. They now, all of them appeared in the court. And the, the, and the stupid man doesn't even want to have a job. And what was it that he was giving them so that they opened their legs for him? Weed. He sells weed. So he gave them free weed. And got his way. And now the children has come. How much weed are you going to sell to take care of all these children? He didn't appear in the court. Next thing he did, he went to Goodwill or Salvation Army and went and bought skates and blouse and bought some stiletto, bought some pumps, <laughs> bought, bought lipstick, bought rosy cheek, bought a wig at Sally's, bought a wig, went and bought a bra and began to dress like a woman. And now, and now went to the social security to go and change his name. He's now a woman. 
Can you believe that? Start wearing high heel shoe and change his name from who he is. Huh? And change his name to a woman's name. In Utah, in Salt Lake City, I know who he is. And one day I saw him passing by my street. I confronted him. I told him, when are you going to stop going to pay your child support and stop doing this stupidity that you are now you are now a lesbian? When did you become a lesbian? People like you can never be a lesbian. You are lying. You are using the gay community to try to survive and run away from your responsibility. You better go and pay your money. He now wears skates. He now wears skates and blouse and, and gown. And now has a husband. Can you believe that? He now has a husband. He now has a husband. How you 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 make you put your children in total confusion? Yeah, he was a husband. He couldn't do nothing. Can you believe that? He couldn't do nothing. Now he's somebody. He's now going to be somebody's wife. How are you going to be somebody's wife with your with your uh, with your on with your ungodly man man kumang in you and your wife? Your wife with man kumang. <laughs> he's telling people that he is new. That his husband is going to uh, give him money for him to go and do a sex change. I say yes, it's about time they cut your dick off. It's about time that they cut it off. You've done enough evil with it. Let them cut it off. I'm in support of it. Cut the damn man command off. Cut it off from him. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. Cut the damn thing off. He has done enough evil with it. Cut it off. Stop. Cut. Chop. 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 Chop it off. Chop. <laughs> you are now you are now you are now a woman look at your hair like you're a woman when did you become a woman is that the way you were born you are now a woman because you are running away from your responsibility yeah my husband is going to give me give me money we are going to travel to thailand or wherever to go and do a sex change i said yeah i'm in support of it I'm in support of it for what he said. Why? He said for one reason. Because you're a wicked fellow. You don't deserve a manko manko. You don't deserve it. Let them chop, 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 chop. Doctors, go quick. Chop it off. He's done so much wickedness with it. Chop the damn thing off. It's about time. Yeah. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> Any man that is not willing to be responsibility to to be responsible for children, for love, and etc. is not worthy of you. Let them go. Don't play with players. Players are dangerous people. They can kill you because they just want to play. Jesus tells us how true fathers, what they do. In the gospel that Vivian read to us, we are told how true fathers, what they do, how they behave. True fathers, if there is a divorce, help to raise their children. They don't go to compete over custody. Real men do not go to compete over custody issue. Small-minded men, midget-minded men. Their mind is midget, it's tiny. And some men, devils have no shame. They are not ashamed. After a woman has finished giving birth, you want the woman to pay your child support. Interesting. And some of you women play into that. You play into that. And after a man has finished making you pregnant and you carried a, a pregnancy for nine months, you, 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 you nurse a child, then you go and pay child support to the man who made you pregnant. Isn't that interesting? And the court will grant it to them because they understand the Lord and yourself. 
That's why if you are a woman and you said, ah, I'm, I'm, I fall in love, I'm happy, I'm in love, my husband is doing it, I'm looking at you, I said, don't worry, life is coming to come and visit you guys. Then you will know whether you're in love or not. Life is coming to visit everyone. Everyone who falls in love. Life is coming to visit you. Everyone who decides to fall in love, life is coming to fall on all of you. Both of you. Life is coming to fall on you. Uh huh. Like the Holy Ghost fall on us. When, uh huh. When the Holy Ghost fall on Jesus, the next thing we hear in Mark's gospel is drove him to the wilderness to go and start fasting and prayer. Many of you think that when the Holy Ghost fall on you, it's all good. It's now great. Everything is rosy, rosy. You don't know that the Holy Ghost fall on you in order to take you to obstacles and see whether you can climb the mountain. You can swim across the river. You do not know that? You thought the Holy Ghost was just for you to heal and to do all of that? Have you seen all the healers? They are all dying. Haven't you seen them? Have you not seen all the prophets? They are all dying, one after the other. They are getting sick. The healers can't even heal themselves. <laughs> Have you not seen it? The whole world, they were going to Nigeria. They were bypassing me here and taking the money to go and give to him. <laughs> I told them the day is coming when all of you will be coming here to Kansas to see me. That day is coming. And the idiot cannot even heal himself. He died. Up till now, we didn't know we didn't know that TB Joshua even has a wife. Now, out of nowhere, a woman has emerged and said, I'm his wife. She now is coming to claim his, uh, his church. They are going to fight and kill each other. You guys think that what is hidden will not be revealed. First time that I saw that man on television, the Holy Spirit told me, that is not from me. And I turned it off and walked away. It takes a few seconds for me to see any person who is doing anything in the name of God, it takes me a second for the Holy Spirit to tell me. That is a gift that I have. It takes me a second for me to know, is that from God or is that from the devil? I don't care whether you are healing the sick or performing miracles, it takes me a second to know who is the force behind it. Take me a second to know. When I saw Benson in the house as a little kid, healing people, performing miracles, the Holy Spirit said, that man is mine. When I saw Kenneth Hagen, even though Kenneth Hagen could not stand strong enough for people of African ancestry, he couldn't. So let's, let's talk about each person's weaknesses. He couldn't stand up for people of African ancestry. He couldn't stand for the unity of America as a nation. He treated these as Yankees, these as Southerners, all that. Kenneth Hagen double into all of that kind of stuff. Or a robot didn't. Or a robot money, money became the over the over the, the biggest thing towards the end of his ministry, which I didn't like. But he was of God. Kenneth Hagen was of God. At least I know that. In spite of what was there, they were of God. At least. Paul Young Cho, when I saw him the first time, read his books, I just knew this is from God. This is from Jesus. T.L. Osborne, who is the biggest of them, biggest of all of them, since after the days of the apostles, is T.L. Osborne. Of Oklahoma. He's the biggest of all of us in this in this game. First time that I saw his crusade on a cinema as a little kid, the Holy Spirit told me that's from me. He is mine. That's a lot of a lot of traditional church people, evangelical Pentecostal, they didn't like T. L. Osborne. They did not like him. He was a father to many, 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 many Christians. And many of them did not even understand him. He was also the richest of all of them. 
The only problem, he didn't, he didn't erect any monument for himself. That's the only problem. He was the richest. If you see his real estate, he was selling real estate to other preachers. He had land. Even the land that Ora Robert and Kenneth Hagen used for their universities and for their Bible school, he sold it to them. He was a top businessman. And T.L. Osborne never asked anybody for money. He never asked anybody for donation. Never! Because he was wealthy. And immediately I saw him as a little kid. The Holy Spirit said, that is mine. First time I saw T.D. Jacks and Crayflow Dollars on television, the Holy Spirit told me, these guys are cowards. I'm serious. I'm telling you, this is a public television. Tell any of them to call me. Let them challenge me and I will tell them to their face that they are cowards. First time I saw Benny Hinn as a kid, I saw Benny Hinn. The Holy Spirit told me he cannot watch his mouth. His mouth will lead him into trouble. He's an angry man. He's an arrogant man. But he has something good about me. The same thing with Reinhold Bonke. So the Holy Spirit doesn't lie to me. Benny Hinn is of God, but he has his arrogancy. And he cannot hold his mouth. And when it is time for him to be out there to speak as a teacher, he can't. They all go backward. Let somebody else do the dirty work for them. As though that is how all the prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors, that's how they behave in the Bible. No. I want people of African ancestry, don't ever hate any one of European ancestry. Don't do it. It's of no use. Why? They have their place in God's government. Those that you guys call white people, I call them either they are European or European Americans. They have their place in God's government. They are our people. They are our people. You cannot be somebody of African ancestry and you leave the white man and white woman out of, out of it. They are part of our race. If you go to Africa, all of you know this. Africa is a mixed, mixed pot. In my family, there are people who are albinos, albinos, people who are fair skin, people who are brown skin, like myself, people who are pure black, dark black. They are Indians. They are Asians, all in African ancestry. And that is why African people have been careful not to call themselves black. Because nobody is, is it, every race is represented in every family. Modern anthropology tells you human beings, every human being on earth today came from black people. They come from people of African ancestry. And that's true. Doesn't, you can't change history. You can't change science. Europeans are part, people of European descendants, Asian descendants, Middle Eastern descendants, they are part of our race. So there is no use. The white man did this, the white man did that, the white woman did this. The, those days are over. We are in a different generation. If you call yourself a man, you have to know this. I don't want to have a ministry that I do not have billions of white people, billions of Asians, Middle Easterners, African, uh, uh, what is it, the West Indies, I want them all. Because I'm a mixture. Happy Lord. Thank you, my lady. Now let's look at the good side. Vivian, look look at verse 9. Read it to us. If ye then, being evil, 
No, no, no. No, start, a, start, start again from bread. Oh, 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 wait, 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 let's see where we start. If, if they should ask bread, will you give them a number stone? 10. Is that number 10? No, 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 no. Oh, that's nine. Nine. I'm sorry. Number nine. Yes. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? That's what a, a father does. Oh. That's what a father does. A man. We are just speaking this. I mean, this refers to man and woman, but here we are just speaking it as a man. It refers to it refers to the man and woman here. But I'm just speaking this. Let's stick to the King James Version. I'm playing with words here. I'm playing with the words fathers because today is Father's Day. This is what a father does. A provider. Not somebody with a stony heart. Instead of providing food. Bread stands for food. Instead of providing food quality food you have a stony heart you let your children starve you don't care you let your woman suffer you quit your job a real father have a job sometimes two or three jobs to make ends meet to make sure there is food. A father is known by the provision, making sure that there is quality food for the children, for the woman. A real woman doesn't sleep around. A real woman stands behind her man. Her man that is a provider, a hunter, not a hunter of bye bye or hunting with his mango mango, but hunting with his head and with his hand and with his mind in order to create money. He's not a man who is coming to come and give you sadness and sickness. And turn you into a mad woman and turn the children into mad kids. You know, there are fathers like that who love control. If they are not in control, nothing, nothing else. They will destroy everything in their path. If it's not their way, it's no other way. Do you see what fathers do? Jesus pointed out here. A real father does not allow his family to suffer. A real father does not allow his children to suffer. He's a provider. And if you can provide, then you can protect. Some men want to fight for their children. Well, they cannot provide. They are willing to fight for their children in court and outside the court. And they have nothing to even fight. We use money to fight. We use brain to fight. They cannot even use their head. They want to go and use guns and their fists. And when the woman finally finds a nice, responsible man who is going to be responsible for the children and for her, the man now suddenly come out of nowhere. And now come to give the children 50 bucks for eight kids. You give, children, you give the whole children $50. Or you take the children to go for a movie and buy them popcorns, load them with soda so that they can grow fat and die. Buy them candies. Go and have a hair cut. The woman can do all those things. 
This is what a real father does. A real father is a generous man. He's a generous person. Making sure that there is nothing lacking in that house. He's a sensitive person. He's a man who, even though when he grew up, he didn't have that opportunity to have all the good things. A real man swear by an oath, even though I did not come from privilege, I'm going to make sure that my woman and the children will enter into privileges and into class. Annie, are you listening to me? Where is my beloved Annie? Amen. Yeah. I will make sure what I didn't have, my children have. A real father pushes himself up so that the children can see him up and climb up with him. He takes them and climb up with them. A real father helps his woman, a wife, whatever the relationship is, to climb. You turn her into a lady. You make her beautiful if she's willing. You send her to college. You don't saddle her with responsibility of her loan. You make sure she gets a house. That's what being a protector means. So a protector does not just mean, hey, stay far away from my woman and my children, please. You know, and they, they, you know, sometimes you are passing a, a woman and her kids and a man, and they, and they, and one of the kids will will wave at you and say, hello, how are you? You know, some kids are like that; they wave at you and talk to you, and you will say, the father will say, hey, don't talk, don't talk to strangers. And if you say hi to the child back, you wave at He said, hey, keep them away from my kids. You know, there are fathers like that. Go and check. That man is zero. Zero. Many of them, zero in their bank account. Mm -hmm. There was one man, when I used to live in the apartment, there was a man like that. Nobody in that apartment, when their children wave at you, you can't wave at them. Their children will say, Hello. And you just walk and pass if they are with their, with their father. You cannot even say a word to them. And I knew those kind of men. I knew that man didn't have no job. One day I saw all their, all their things were thrown out. They were out at the door. And they, 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 the marshal came and locked them out. And then the idiot now wanted to talk to me. Somebody told him that that I am a I am a bishop that I help people. He now came to my door to knock from a different building. I think he went he went to the office and they told him that he should talk to me, that I help people. And he came to my door to come and knock. And I looked through the pigeonhole and I saw his face. I didn't open my door. Yep. Don't don't help people like that. Arrogant. Now look at look at this. I want you to use scripture to verify things. We use scripture to know how to deal with issues. Do not is a sin against the Holy Ghost for you to allow yourself and your children to mingle with a man that is not a responsible man. That I've emphasized over and over again. Let's go to verse number 10. Vivian? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Do you hear that? So if we want to take verse 9 literally, and it means bread. Hmm. Now, are you giving them bread alone? Jesus is adding that a real father makes sure they get fish too. You see that? You add fish. You add fish to the bread. 
Remember, this is the same Jesus who multiplied two fishes and five loaves of bread as a father. Balance diet. Balance diet. You see, this is dieting right here. Do you see that? Like the children who every day they were eating the same thing and they started to sing. Quality. <laughs> oh, yes. The quantity is given unto me. Did you hear that song? It's a quality. Oh, yes. He has never seen no quality in food. But quantity has been loaded. Starch have been loaded onto them. So they were singing that. Yeah. Quality. Oh, yes. But the quantity added unto me. You give them bread and there is no fish. Hmm. Like the little woman in the, uh, and the, that lives in the shoe with the children. <laughs> Beat them with sticks and send them to bed. With swollen tummy. Full of starch hmm. and no vegetables. No nuts, no fruits, no salad, no fish. Do you know that in the story of Jesus, you always see bread, you always see wine, and you always see fish. You hardly see meat. No. Do you know that? You always see, you always see these things. Bread, fish, wine. You don't really see meat. Even Jesus was found, even Jesus was found after his resurrection, he was found by the side of the river, by the beach, smoking fish and asked them to come and have breakfast. They were, they were eating fish for breakfast and bread. Can you imagine that? Quality food, quality, quality. I love it. So a true, a true father doesn't load them with rice. He makes sure that the stew has a lot of ntanta. I hope all of you know what ntanta means. Choo choo. There's a lot of ntanta, a lot of choo choo, a lot of choo choo in the stew. Uh -huh. You make sure that, that, that when, they are, when they are eating, there is good stuff inside that soup, inside that meal. That meal is a complete meal. It got all the good things, all the goodies is in it. That's what a father gave the children and the woman the best. The family gave the best. So if a man who calls himself a father and a daddy is not giving you the best, tell him to go to somewhere else. You don't need him. Please tell him to go somewhere else. We don't need you. Pack and go. This is the law. This is the law right here. This is the law. And if a man says he's going to give you a house, if it's not quality, well furnished, tell him that you guys are not going there. Unless you just want to stay there and mark time until when the time is ready, then you move out on your own. Then I can understand. But outside that, everything must be the best. A father provides the best. There's nothing like, should I go and steal? Then go and steal. Is it not your age that goes and steal and bring the best home? You are asking your children or your, or your woman or your wife, should I go and steal to get the money? So what happened? Is it not people with the same head that you have who are giving the best to their, to, to their children and to their, to their woman? Eh? Those who give the best to their, to their children, do they use eggs to, to do pounded yam for them? Do they use eggs to do, to, do, to do gari and fufu for them? Huh? Or if the child asks for fish, you give them excuse. Verse 9 and verse 10, Jesus is telling us there is no excuse. There is no excuse. You better, be, you put your life together first before you start starting a family. This is what he's telling us men. Because what happened to a lot of men and a lot of young people? Everybody is getting married. You must have a child to represent you. You don't know whether there will be social security and all of that. You must have children who, who will represent you in the future. Everybody run to go and get married. And those marriages don't last. Bill Gates is getting divorced. Already he is divorced. 
Amazon, Jeff Bezos got divorced. All of them are getting divorced. Why do you think they are all getting divorced? Because at the time of marriage, they were struggling. They were trying to build a life. And now they build a life. They now know what kind of what kind of relationship they want for the rest of their life. That's why they're having divorces. And that's why it's not good to enter into a relationship when you are a kid. Just get ready because life is coming to visit you. And if it's not founded on the rock, when I say on the rock, I mean both Jesus and both responsibility, it's going to all collapse. That's why you must like somebody enough as to like them when they will when they will not look as young as you think they are you must like there must be things in a person that you like so much that you cannot do without it so that it can stand the test of time read verse number 11. 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. A good father give good gifts. Do you see that? It's a yes. gift giver. Do you know the meaning? Some people was that too. Some people who because they are broke. Some people because they are broke and zero. They, they, they want to chip in this verse. I'm not letting you out of the trap. You've been caught already. You are not getting out of this. They will tell you, eh, 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 if you who is evil, you know how to give good gifts. They say, ah, it means you give people the Holy Ghost. You give them advice. You know, there are fathers who are good at that. I call them sweet mouth, sweet mouth, zero fathers. Sweet mouth. They are sweet mouth, but they are zero fathers. Whenever you meet them, they start talking about Jesus to you. They start talking about God. They start giving you advice and all of that. And when I leave their presence, I ask myself, why did they not apply this advice to work for them? Do you guys get what I'm saying? Anytime you meet those kind of fathers, they're always giving you advice. As they give, they are giving to you. They are imparting the gift of advice to you. Oh, don't do this. Oh, if you do this, this is what will happen. That, that. I say, why did they not... Do that for themselves so that they would have been wealthy today. Amen. Give, give good gifts to your children. Save money when they turn 16, 17, 18. Buy them cars. Let, let me tell you something because we are not joking here. Every child of Mary, our own Mary, all the children, when one they turn 16, she buys them a car. All of them. I saw it. Every one of them. That's why Mary is not just a woman. She also carries the responsibility of a man. I've seen it. Hey, me, Mary. Go and go and ask Diane and Lucky. They will tell you how responsibility looks like. Or Nancy. Go and ask Vivian. They will tell you. Ask Roslyn. Roslyn will tell you. Because these are females. I mean, lucky you are not a female. I'm, 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 I'm talking about these other women who was never men mentioned. These are women who carries the responsibilities like a man. Yeah. 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 And there are some and there are some young girls that I've seen in my ministry. Some young girls who are carrying the responsibilities of men. People like Juliet. Hallelujah. Yeah, people of Juliet of Aruba. People like Anne. Anne, are you on this line? Oh, Anne. Yeah. Go and start looking. Vicky, I can name many, many people in our mission who are women, but they are carrying the responsibilities that a man is supposed to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
you can finish that. So, so a man, a real father, is a gift giver. Give gifts. Why do I work so hard? Because I know the future is not on my side. I better get it right, right now, financially. Because people are coming in the future. I've seen tomorrow. Tomorrow is full of needy people who are going to come. And I need to get it right financially right now because there is no excuse. There is no excuse for any man to talk about that. It's because they suffered from this, their parents were this, they, this happened. There is no excuse here. Don't give me the excuse that because you come from a divorced family, that's why you can't be a man. You can't be a father. There's no excuse here. Because you suffer that kind of thing is the reason why you will do better. Shouldn't, shouldn't problem be the reason why you are driven to achievement. Problems should drive you to achievements. Instead of driving you to be homeless. Anybody who because they had one problem. And they can't achieve anything. It shows. Let me tell you what trouble do. Problems. Or you were born into problems. Or you were born into obstacles. Or as you grow up you saw obstacles. Is going to prove who you are. Naturally. Problem is going to reveal who you are. It's going to manifest. If you want people to, let me tell you, if you were hiding, life is going, life is going like, like uh, Shante says, it's going to smoke you out. You know, like if you have a snake or you have some, some, some rabbits or some animal living in the ground, you want to bring them out. What, how do you bring them out? Smoke. Smoke. You smoke them out. Yeah. Wherever little Shante, are you on the line? <laughs> yes. Okay. Shante says, Shante says, life is going to smoke you out. I was discussing something with, with her and she used that word and I seize it. Whether you like it or not, life is coming to smoke you from, from your little holes where you've been hiding. Hallelujah. And you are telling people the reason. My father and mother were not together. There is a lot of mental people and issues in my family. Oh, I was beaten as a child and abused and all of that. Do you know how many abuse that many of us we went through? And we said nothing? Do you know how many abuse that some of us went through? In life. Of different kind of abuses. The kind, the, the, how many people that... I have loved and cherished that of all died when I was little as I was growing up that should have put me in, 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 in a mental institution. Instead, those things made me sway that I'm going to become somebody whether life like it or not. Because life is coming to test you. You're going to say it's because, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, you know I'm a drunkard. You know I smoke, I smoke uh, drugs and so on. Bob Marley smoked drugs and is a millionaire. Peter Tosh smoked drugs. Gregory Isaac, all these reggae musicians, all these rock star, from Elvis Presley to all of them. They are crazy people. Donald Trump is a crazy man, yet he was a president. <laughs> Obama, Obama is, is a, what do we call it, an orphan, no father, no mother, yet he's a president, tell me about it, look at Dick Cheney, the former vice president during the time of George Bush Jr., he has had problems, yet he was a vice president, Reagan, Reagan, Ronald Reagan, the cowboy, the movie star, suffered from Alzheimer's dementia. 
and all forms of sickness. And yet, he was a president. So tell me. Man, he was the president. Who? Yeah. Yeah, we know. We know that she was behind the scene. Is it John F. Kennedy? He was a sick man, yet he was a president. And you are telling me that because you are bipolar, you are telling me that because you have this, you are telling me that because you have that problem, that's why you can't be anybody. You are telling me because you are in Europe, in America, you don't even have your paper to be there? Because that's what some people tell me. And you cannot find another way around something. Find a way around obstacles. Hallelujah. And don't come to tell us your story. We don't want to hear your story no more. We are tired of it. Thank you. Problems should drive you to achievement. Write that down for me, Vivian. Problems should drive you to achievement. Poverty should drive you to riches. Mary, I hope you are writing it. Yes. Problems should drive you to achievement. Poverty should drive you to riches. And you don't have... Look at, look at Steve Hawking. Uh, is, that, is that his name? Stephen Hawking? Paralyzed. Yes. Yes. Paralyzed. The Englishman. And yet he was the world's greatest mathematician and scientist. Doing physics and mathematics. Blinking with his eyes to speak to a machine for him. And you are coming here to give me an excuse. Hallelujah. Tell me about it. A father, a real man, is a giver of gifts. Because you are willing to risk it all. Many of you do not know why I have what I'm doing now. Because I've told God, except I become a burnt offering, I'm not looking back. I've given myself as a burnt offering. I'm not looking back. So there's no human being who can destroy me because I'm already a burnt offering. Hallelujah. Yeah. In my place, when they mm -hmm. offer you to the gods, when they cook you, what we call cooking, they really, they really put water in a very big, in a very big cold drum, a very big, we call it drum. It's a tall thing. They put hot water, set fire under it, and they throw you in. If they don't do that, they pour oil into it. The oil that will cover you, and they throw you inside that boiling oil and let you boil. You don't die, because remember that there are evil spirits inside that thing. Uh-huh. And they throw you in, you go there, and mix with all those evils in that thing. They put all kind of concoction in that thing. And then they bring you out, and place you by a tree, and shoot you, and kill you. I'm serious. They will shoot you with a gun, or with a spear, and kill you. And then they will chant you back to life. If you guys don't know this, I've seen it. That's why many of them, those people, when one of them dies, whether it's a top businessman and all of that, they, they, they tell you to come back to the village, that you bring your, your body back to the village. Because that's where the power comes from. They tell you, give them back their ring, their chains and everything. And they will wake you up. Even if you've died for months, they will bring you back to them. And they will come there and chant you and wake you up. And you will come back from the land of the dead and enter your body and you will stand up. And they will ask you questions about your wealth, your will, everything. They write it all out. They will have a lawyer there. This is what some of us we see. This is not a story. They will wake you up from death. Even if you've died for months, they will come. They will ask them not to bury you until they finish with you. They will come and ask you everything about your land, where your land begin, where it ends, who did you buy it from, everything, where do you have this, in which country. They will have it all written because there's not going to be any fight over your life. And after that, they chant you back and send you back to the land of the dead. That's what they do. If you didn't know it, know it. 
Uzo, you know that the Ogboni fraternity practice it. You know it. Yeah. You know they practice it. That is why when they finish church burial for mm -hmm. those for those particular people, when they finish the church burial, they send church people to leave. If you don't know it, know it. Yeah. When they finish church service, they ask church folks to go. Only those people who belong to that thing goes with you to the burial place. Mm -hmm. And when they reach the burial mm -hmm. place, they will put something inside that and chant you and wake you up and talk with you before they, they chant you back into your coffin and close it and put you there. These are real. These are real. These, these are no joke. Many of you who, who you, you hear the name of Jesus, oh, it's just Jesus. Because that's what we've turned Jesus into politics. we turn turned Jesus into, into race, into religion. Go and ask the other side and they will tell you whether Jesus is religion or race or church. They will tell you that guy is real. That's the real damn thing. That's what they will tell you. That's why some of us who come from the practice of, of, of these ancient deities, when Jesus came for me, my father, my father told his brother, he said, he is not going for the ancient deities. He is going with this man. This man already came for my son since he was young. He's going with him. That's Jesus. My father wasn't stupid because my father knows my character that if I am allowed to practice ancient things, the things of the society that I was born, I will sacrifice all of them. I'm telling you the truth. I will sacrifice anybody who give me one trouble. Bam! I will sacrifice you. My dad knows it. Anybody who give me one trouble, you will be the next. I will submit your name. I will tell them, take him. <laughs> Until they finish taking all of them. <laughs> and I will replace them without happy. <laughs> this is not a joke. This is serious matter. This is serious matter. This is serious matter. That's a lame Go and ask the Ogboni fraternity and they will tell you. None, when one they finish the church service, they ask all the church folks to go. Not even the pastor is allowed to follow the coffin. They will tell the pastors, please, bishop, they will thank you. They will give you a big sum of money. They will give the bishops and all of these people. They will give them a big sum of money. You guys can go. Because those people, they don't need money. They have money. Huh? They will tell you guys, you are so happy, and then, then they will have a big feast. All of you are busy eating, and those people are in the burial ground. No, not, not even the wife or, or, or anybody is allowed. Not even the children are allowed with the coffin of that man. I've seen it. You are not going there. They won't allow. If you go there, they will kill you, because they don't want you to see what you should not see. It's like when you are telling the story in the Bible about how Jesus walked on water. How the three Hebrew children were thrown into the fire and they were not burned. How Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and the lion. When I read it to my elders in the village in Africa, when I read it, they will be clapping. They will tell me. They will be shouting, Omon, Omon, Omon. Do you know the meaning of that? All the two bombs will be shouting Amen when you tell them the story of Jesus. How Jesus healed the blind. How he walked on water. How he calmed the storm. How he did this. They will be shouting Amen, Amen, Amen. You know the reason? Because they themselves are doing the same thing. Uh -huh. They walk on water. Those men are walking on water. You see a man walk. They, many of them are fishermen. So they know what they are talking about. They will walk on one side of the river and they will walk on top of the water to the other side. So they will be shouting, Oh man, telling you, Jesus is master. He is the master of the art and the craft of life and power. That's what they are shouting. Oh man, oh man, oh man. That's why when they see me, let me tell you, I've been to places where pastors came there and they became mental, they became madmen and they took them out. Some came there and died there. And I came there. And the two bombs, because I'm one of them, one of the two bombs, the two bombs, the owners of the land, when I arrived there, I understand the game. 
I went to them with a drink and asked them to pour it and let's talk. They say, well, you are the only person who come here and who knows, who knows what is underground. I say, yes, I do. And we started to talk. All the witches came to welcome me. All the, all the witch doctors came to welcome me. I gave them what belongs to them. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. <laughs> and what did I give to them? I told them I'm not here to come and disturb anybody. I'm here to come and work with everybody here. And I want you guys to help me to do this job very well. They say, oh yeah, you are now talking. And then I gave them, I gave them something, an animal. Say, kill it and cook food for all of them. Oh, they love it. Give them the drink, let them drink. And you guys don't know the meaning of that. In the world of darkness, when you come into a territory where there is a power clash between good and evil, and you do that, the animal that they are eating, the cow or the goat or the, or the sheep they are eating, they are eating themselves, if you don't know it. That's what I've done. I've sacrificed, yeah, if you guys didn't know it, I've sacrificed all of them. All the witch doctors have sacrificed them. I've bought them and I've sacrificed all of them. All the chiefs have sacrificed all of them. Why? They've eaten my food. They have my money. They've spent my money. They, they, they've drunk my highest and the best alcohol in their belly. They are now in sacrifice. Any of them who tried to kill me, that's the meaning of the medicine that I have. If you guys did not know, you know it now. The Holy Ghost Juju that I carry is called let me tell you the meaning. Who should tell them the meaning? Yes. Mary, you should tell them the meaning. You are very close to me. <laughs> Did you hear that? That's the name of the juju that I carry. It's called anyone who come to kill me or my partners will kill themselves. That's the meaning. If you come to kill me while you're even thinking about it, you kill yourself. Why? Because I've sacrificed all of you with my food and drink and money and everything. Yep. So that meat, that meat that you are chewing, you see them, their mouth is big, full of goat meat and cow meat and drink. They are drinking and getting drunk. They are happy. You do not know that you are eating yourself, you are drinking yourself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> a true father knows the secret the secret of this world the bible says we are not ignorant of the of the what the devices of the enemy if the devices knows if the if the if the enemy knows our devices why don't you know his own devices they told one of my friends to come his father died so his brethren told him that he's going to be the one to put the knife in the throat of the cow they have to sacrifice for the feast to celebrate his father. father I told him, don't put that knife there. I tell him, don't put it. Give it to another brother of yours to cut. Who is the most wicked of all of them that you suspect is the bad person? He said, everybody knows that guy. I say, he should be the one. Tell him that since he's the, he, he's the one who like power, He's the one who says he's in charge of the family because he's the one who is fighting everybody for the land and for the money. Let him be the one to put the knife on the cow. I told him, give him the knife. So I called him and I said, yeah, 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 you come here, come here, come here. He came. I said, how are you, sir? He said, fine. I said, I want you to put the knife on the cow. You know what I mean by that. Put the knife on the cow, which means I want you to slaughter the cow. Hey, your brother, he's with me. You know he's with me. We are we are going to be watching. We want you to do it, you know. The guy they wanted to put the knife on the cow, my friend, is a cardiologist, he's a medical doctor. I said, no, 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 you are not putting the knife on the cow. Bring the other guy, let him. The one who won the money, who is fighting everybody for it. Hey, come, come, come. You are the one to do it. And the elder said, no, 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 you should be the dog. I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, I said, you guys should remember who I am, okay? This one, we are not talking about church thing. We are talking of the land, the thing of the land, the the po, the, the, po, po, the po, po of the land. That's what we are talking about. Put the knife there. And the guy came and killed the cow. <laughs> he finished killing the cow. Two days later, he was dead. 
<laughs> because he was killing himself. He didn't know that when I went with my friend to buy the cow, to buy the cow, we bought the cow, and I asked my friend to say everything he has to say into the cow, and I did what I did on the cow. So I asked the man, you come and put the knife on the cow. And he did two days later, he was gone. And there was peace in the family forever and ever, up till today. If my friend put that knife on that cow, my friend would have died. There are things that you should know. A true father understand the game of life. You should know. You are not an ignorant person. Vivian, finish. How much more shall your father reach this in heaven? He tells you exactly where your heavenly father is. God the father lives in heaven. Jesus tells you that. He doesn't live on the earth. He doesn't live on any other planet. He lives in planet heaven. Jesus tells you exactly where your heavenly father lives. How much more will your heavenly father not do what? Give good things to them that ask him. So, God the Father is not just a giver of good gifts. So now let's look at it. Because all of you have that spiritual gift. So listen carefully. <laughs> you read verse 11. You hear what verse 11 says. Eighthly Father give good gifts to their children. Heavenly Father give good things to their children. Hey, did you hear me? Did yes. you guys hear me? Eighthly Father give what? Good gifts. Good gifts. Good things. Our Heavenly Father gives what? Good things. Good things. Good things. Do you get it? So, good gifts. You can interpret it to be anything. In Christendom, it has to do with spiritual gift and all of that. If you want to just settle for spiritual gift, you'll be poor forever. You have to ask if you have spiritual gift, if you have educational gift, mental gift, no matter what your gift is, you must ask your Heavenly Father to also attach what to it? Good things. Good things. Good things. Do you see it? The Bible, you are reading it yourself. It's not spiritual gift. It's good things. Good cars. Good houses. Good money. You know? Yeah. Do you know how it feels like for somebody to walk to your door? Or for your dad to walk to your door? Early in the morning and say, Daughter, good morning. Here is an envelope and you open it. He said, this money was put together for you since last week. Good morning with good money. Do you know how that feels like? Our Heavenly Father is qualified to be our God because He is a giver of good things. He is a giver of good things. Now, let's touch down here. A lot of you do not receive from God. You know why? Because you are just like every other religious people. I want all of you to listen carefully now. Because we are going to end this service. The reason why you don't receive from God. Is because you treat God. Like God only. You see God as only God. You go to him for power, for protection. Possible for his power to open doors for you to make money. That's why you don't receive nothing. Because God is just religion. He is God and that's all he is. And so what do people do to God? They come with flowers, incense, candles, come to chant and pray. And do the traditions. That's what they come to do. And ask for things. They are asking from a God. They don't really have personal. Personal bonding. There is no devotion. There is nothing personal. Do you know that Jesus. Very very few places that he called God the Father God. 
throw out the reading of today. Throw out the reading of today. Do you hear Jesus calling God the Father? Do you hear him calling him God? No. He called him Heavenly Father. Throw out the ministry of Jesus. He talks of God the Father as Father. Abba. He called him Father. Personal. Not God. When are you going to stop treating God as God? And start treating him like a person. Like a being. Somebody that you can communicate with. Not somebody that is way high and lifted up. Like they taught us in Christianity. They taught us in Jewish religion. They taught us in all these religions of the world. That follows the God of Abraham. Or whatever they follow. When are you going to stop making God to be that big almighty? Well, he is, we know. Ancient of days. Yes, he is, we know. Jesus is almighty. God the Father is almighty. The Holy Ghost is almighty. God the Father is ancient of days. Jesus is ancient of days. The Holy Ghost is ancient of days. When are you going to start treating God as personal? As you talk to me. As you relate with me. As you converse with me. As you share with me. You give to him. Like, I mean, when? Because the notion of God that they brought to us made God so far away and we will even die trying to have faith. Trying to do this. There is so much laws to obey, to follow in the Bible that is unreal. By the time you finish even carrying out one law, you that law has killed you. <laughs> You are trying to have the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of patience, the fruit. Of, by the time that you try, 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 trying itself will kill you. Why not just allow God to be personal to you? See, I stopped treating God as God a long time ago. He is God. That's already known. He's my God. But he's more than a God to me. He's more than a God to me. So that's why I am entitled to receive whatever I ask. Why? Because I'm a member of the Trinity. I'm a member of the family. And so are you. That's why he talks about knock, 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 ask, seek. These are not for people who come to look for God. These are for people who come to look for a God who is like them. If God is not like me, I don't want him. No. You are highly lifted up. There is no one. Yes, he is highly and lifted up. But that is not the kind of God that I want. I want the God that is so highly lifted up. But when he appeared, he's so ordinary. So that he doesn't, with, with his hugeness and almightiness, he doesn't kill me. He can carry me along with him. And that's what Jesus came to show us about God. He is Father. So today that we are doing a happy Father's Day for all the fathers. And trying to teach the fathers how to be a good father. And trying to encourage those who are already good fathers. And tell them, I understand all the burdens that you bore and all the burdens you are bearing. Thank you. Your reward is on the way. That's for those who are already good fathers. If you are afraid of your earthly father, then he's not a father. Because many of you are afraid of God. You're afraid of Jesus. You're afraid of the Holy Ghost. You're afraid of God the Father. And that's why you run to them. Many of you go to God because they are powerful. You want somebody powerful to protect you, to run to. To protect you from going to hell. But I want God more than, more than salvation. I want God more than going to, escaping from hell. So salvation is very important to me. 
But I'll tell you something. What about all those who did not confess Jesus as Lord and Savior in the Bible and they are still in heaven now? They went to heaven. What about that? Who followed the who followed the religion of conscience of a good 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 conscience? So for me, number one, get born again. That's a no, no no negotiation. You must be born again. You must receive Jesus because that's the way, the truth, and the life. That's the center of our religion. That's the center of connection back to God the Father and to Himself and to the Holy Ghost. Is Jesus. But then after that, let God be personal. Stop treating him only as God. Jesus called God the Father. Throw out his time. He called him Father. Look at the prayer that he taught his disciples. He did not say, Oh God Almighty, who art in heaven. What did he say? Our Father, who art in heaven. The same thing he's saying today. How much more your heavenly Father give good things to those that ask him. Yes. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven. Why can't you see it? That this is personal. This is no longer about God as almighty as huge. You're looking for a giant to save your ass. God is more than a giant. God is more than what you think. And I want a God that I can relate with when he appears to me. He is, he is my father. God must be a father to you before he becomes a God to you. If he can be your father, then he will be truly your God because you will be able to treat him right. You will not lie and manipulate in his name. You will respect him. You will honor him. The fear of him will be in you. So why people do all kind of reckless thing in his name is they are just treating him as God and they are not getting anything. They are not going to get anything out. In fact, let me tell you, their relationship with God will even be the reason why they go to hell. Because they are just using God. And of course, they are not using him. They are just using his name. Learn, allow God to be a father to you. Now, how many of you have the picture of your father with you? Please let me know. How many of you before we end this service? Happy Father's Day to all our fathers! Okay. Okay, Mary has us. Uzo, you can't find yours? You can't find any? Are you serious? Yeah, I only had one, one big one, but I can't find it anymore. Who came and took it? <laughs> the ghost came back and took it and told you now you are an orphan. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. You must find it too. Go and find that picture of your own father. If you, if you really love your father, he was a great man and so on, uh, you, you need to find his picture and have it somewhere where you can see it. Who again? Who again? Who again? Huh? You have the picture of your father? Yes. Okay, you have yours? Okay. Is that all the people who have a picture of their parents? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. I want you to place the picture of your father and the picture. Remember what I said? Anybody who choose, who you choose to be a father to you should be like we are talking about fathers today. Not poor, not cheap, not cheap. Not somebody who came and divided the family, destroyed, never really wants you, all of that. You have to know this for a fact. 
If you don't know who your father is and you were given a family name, you have to choose your own father and you have to stand by it. Now finish talking. Now I want you to look at that picture. Where is Victoria? Victoria is not on the line today. I think she called me. She might have left me a message. I think I saw her call. I know that she is very proud of her father. And Vicky, part of the service we are doing today is in honor of your father too. I'm very proud of mine. I know Mary is proud of hers. I know Anne is proud of hers. And a lot of you. Hallelujah. Open that picture and keep it in front of you. You are going, if your father is already dead, you're going to thank God for his life and to promise to carry the memory of the good things that he uh, that he did on the earth. You have to carry it on. Vivian, I know, Vivian and Rosalind, I know you have so much respect for your for your parents. So open their pictures. You're going to ask that the best that was in your father should become part of you. You're going to ask for it. That the best that was in them should follow you. And also, you're going to talk to them because they are not dead. Talk to them and tell them. Look at their picture and talk to that picture. And tell them that you are here to represent them. So wherever they are, good things should begin to happen to you on the earth that you are representing them. You are to tell that picture, I'm representing you on the earth. I'm carrying out your generation. I'm making the next generation to happen because you brought me here. And because of that, I need your blessing. For many of you, your parents did not bless you. Many of you, your parents did not bless you. Vivian and Mary and Victoria remind me because we are going to do a separate video about this. About you and the picture of your father. We are going to do a separate thing. We are, this we are doing for our partners to be in this video. You must have respect and honor for your father before you can do this. I want you to begin to pray. I'm going to ring the bell and you are going to... Don't run out of this service. Talk to that picture. If you don't have a picture... But you still have a picture of your father in your in your mind. Talk to that picture. Open your mouth and talk to that picture. Tell them I'm representing you. I honor you. And I want your blessing right here on the earth. They are listening to you. Wherever they are, they are listening to you. I don't care where they are, they are listening to you. So talk to that picture. Whether in your mind or physically. Whether those pictures are posted on Facebook. Wherever the picture is. Or wherever the person is, speak to that person. If your father is not a good person, don't do it. Choose a new father. You need a new father. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to talk to that picture right now. Thank them for what they've done. Yeah. If you did not have good relationship with your father, don't do this. Don't do it until you choose a father. Continue. Talk to that picture. When you finish talking to the picture, you go. Ask them to bless you. Ask them to bless you. When you finish talking, you can now go and give, send your offerings and so on. And then you can go. I will see you on Friday and I will see you on Sunday. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. And while you are praying, you are talking to those pictures, you are talking to your Father, because God is God of the living, He's not God of the dead. So talk to them. They are not dead. They are alive. Talk to them. While you talk to them also before you leave this church today, tell your Heavenly Father to give you the good things. Tell your heavenly father to give you the good things. And then you can now go. God Almighty be with you. I'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye. Be with you too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.